we all have a story to tell. Let's tell yours. Welcome to the Intellectual People Podcast with your host, Jason. Come together and listen to journey stories and more from interesting people. Welcome your host, Jason. Next on the Intellectual People Podcast, I have Tom from We Roll. How are you doing today, Tom? Fine, thank you. Thank you for asking. Great. So, Tom, what is We Roll actually? Is it a semi custom or a custom camping builder? <laughs> I wish it was production uh, cookie cutter at this point because of the times that we're in. Um, the supply chains, we struggle with COVID and plants closing down to get resources locally, axle factories uh, slowing down, um, window manufacturers running on skeleton crews. Uh, you know, the, the, the supply chain at this point is a challenge. So, but we've always tried to let people, instead of using the word personal or customized, I would say, let's use the word personalize. Okay. So, how did you, let's go back in your early days. So, growing up, what was your main interest? Real estate. Real estate. Commercial or, or residential? Well, residential, residential building, which I spent many, many years in real estate. As a realtor or developer? Mm, both. I was a uh, sold real estate for Florida's friendliest hometown, the Villages, for ten years, and wow. uh, very good to me. And with that, I used the money to buy land and get into real estate development. And um, my I did in my local town three developments. Uh, my last development was a townhouse community. And I was supposed to, that was supposed to be it. I was supposed to retire from that. And uh, hence, um, the uh, administration and office had come up with a knee-jerk reaction to the mortgage crisis, created a law called the Dodd-Frank Act, and the plans to carry the financing on all the townhouses that <laughs> we built went bye-bye. And... Uh, Hence, that's where the career change, I guess, came in. Interesting. So in what year did you start WeRoll? Uh, I think it was 2016. Okay. And how did that come about? True story. Um, it's a deep story. I don't know if I should go that deep. but uh, As much as you want to hear. Um, at the time, the, the tiny house market was exploding when I was finishing these townhouse communities. And um, well, I did this basically a $3 million project and uh, I was supposed to carry financing on this, but the Dodd-Frank Act changed all that from these townhouses. And um, I realized, wow, I just made a huge mistake because the title companies weren't going to close these transactions. I was no longer able to carry mortgages because I'd have to qualify people, et cetera, et cetera. And um, it just hit me hard, like, wow, you know, here I am at 46 years old thinking, okay, I'm going to retire. Everything's going to be fine. So I end up, you know, one, having one of these sleepless nights. And uh, I went down to my piece of property that I have, a little uh, you know, industrial park. And I just, to the truth of the matter, I said, just started praying, saying, you know, Lord God, what do I do at this point of my life? And mm. I made a, you know, serious, serious mistake. And um, it was ironic, but I was just walking around my property and uh, this man standing there, one of the tenants, and he, he looks at me and he just starts talking to me and he says, um, you know, I got to tell you something crazy. I said, what's that? He says, do you believe in God? And I started like laughing almost like, well, are you just listening to me? And I said, well, yeah, but why do you ask? He says, well, I should be in jail right now. He says, no judge in the state uh, could have released these handcuffs, but I was DUI and I ran from the cops. But anyway, I'm out and boy, I'm so thankful 
for your mom because my mom is property manager of the property. And I said, well, why? He said, because she's been letting me stay here. I said, stay here? Well, what do you mean by that? In, in a, in a, this is an industrial park and storage units. You stay here. He says, yeah, look. And he opens up one of the uh, – he opens up one of the pods, you know, the, the storage units, and I save this picture on my phone. I don't know if you can see it, but this picture is on my phone. Yep. It was a um, – see if you can see that. Yep, I can. And maybe this you guy can, took – send that to me. I can a, also include it. A Penske trailer, painted it gray, put windows in it, put electrical in it, and it was a five by eight. And he said, I'm living in this thing. Wow. I couldn't stop staring at it. I, I, I just couldn't stop staring at it. And, and at that time, because of the tiny home craze, uh, this was in. And I'm like, wow, you know, those are cool. So... <clears throat> the next day, I went into an RV dealership, and I said, um, looking for a small camper. And <laughs> they showed me small. I said, nah, smaller than that. And they, oh, you want this company, such and such. So I'm like, really? Never heard of them. Well, lo and behold, they happened to be in my town. I went down to them, and I'm looking at these little boxes that they, the salesman, sales lady said, you know, we've just sold our thousand unit. I'm thinking you sold a thousand of these for this much money. Wow. So it was perplexing because I'm like, this is insane. You know, this is just, is this really for real? And um, after that, I ended up going to a cargo trailer dealer and I started finding out about cargo trailers because I'm like, you know, I need, some kind of assembly line if I'm going to do this on a bigger scale. And um, I tried to go to this cargo trailer dealership and, or manufacturer and had to get to them by buying a trailer in another state. And I just said, please get me to the plant. And I went to the plant, did a tour, and uh, the man looks at me and he says, uh, Son, why do, you, why do you want to get in the car cargo trailer business? I said, well, I really don't. I, I just need your assembly line to do this. He says, well, why? Because, you know, imagine I was a real estate developer. And, you know, you pull up in a new twin turbo BMW, and you don't really fit the profile of the trailer business. Little did he know, I just made, the, you know, $3 million. I had $3 million reasons why to go. I made a big financial mistake because of, you know, no attorney could really decipher the Dodd-Frank Act. And I was truthful. I looked at him and I said, sir, because I made a serious financial mistake. I built, you know, all these townhouses, 27 townhouses out of pocket. And we wanted to carry, you could Google the newspaper of the city of Bellevue, you know, Ocala. We were building these and offering houses, brand new houses, 3,000 down. They make payments to us. For, you know, we were carrying the mortgages, and, uh, but we were unable. And I said, you know, that's what happened. And he looks at me and he says, well, let me tell you what happened to me. He says, I made houses, galvalume houses, you know, out of metal, galvalized metal, galvalume. He said, I built them and the bank wouldn't finance them. He says, I went broke. He says, I went so broke. I, um, I started building hog houses. I'm thinking, what the heck's a hog house? <laughs> and uh, he's like, you know, with hogs down. I'm like, well, that's a Georgia thing. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Last year, you know, we, we did uh, pretty good and told me his numbers. And I'll never forget. I was like, wow. So I walked back to my car. He says, go in and tell, tell the girl what you want. Well, I'll build your trip. This way. I'll help you. And I ran back and I said, Mr. Edward here. And I gave him a check for $100,000. He says, what's this? And I said, sir, you told me your numbers. You know, I realized I'm like <laughs> one-tenth of one percent like of your total volume. So uh, I want to uh, get started with you. And um, hence, I had a manufacturer start with me and building these steel trailers. And then uh, I found local manufacturers to build my aluminum trailers. and. 
the local manufacturer that I found, you know, he built one, built two, and then next thing you know, he'd take my money and we'd build the trailers, drug them out, and then I went to another manufacturer and, you know, was over near Daytona Beach and took my money and, you know, said he'd build them, couldn't get them built. And the truth of the matter is I went back to the man, the first aluminum trailer builder that I went I worked for him while I had we roll for two months for free, sweeping his floors, running his errands, struggling yep. just for him to build my trailers. And he wouldn't do it. He just, just, you know, sometimes you leave. Sometimes, sometimes people take advantage of you. And um, let's just say I was vulnerable. I got taken advantage of and, uh, and uh, enough was enough. And one day I walked into him. Because what he didn't realize is I was becoming friends with all of his employees. Hmm. And um, I then walked in and looked the man in the eyes and said, you know, you mistake kindness for weakness. He says, what's that supposed to mean? And I said, I'm just, I'm manning up and telling you, you mistake kindness for weakness. And the next day, I basically took 80% of his staff and started evil. And... Uh, <laughs> That's how we roll is born. Four years later, yeah. <laughs> Four years later, we're still at it. Yes, sir. Oh, understood. So moving on. So you take 80% of his staff and you set up shop. And where is that in Ocala that you set Ocala, up? Ocala, Florida. Yes, sir. Ocala. Okay. And you start out with five by eights? Start out with a little, yeah. It's funny you say, yeah, I did. Little guys? Okay. And how did it go? Your first first year phenomenal phenomenal that's and that's that's hence the, the the true first year that was before i started manufacturing because i was we were always supposed to be a marketing company okay <laughs> so it was supposed to be a marketing company for what these five by eight trailers i wasn't supposed to manufacture them right the year i was just marketing i see and then when I sold these and couldn't get them built on time. You took it over. <laughs> In a nice way. I had no choice. Right. Understood. And that's okay. So you set up, you're doing well the first year. And how are people finding you? Is it really just word of mouth and online? Yes, sir. I mean, I did have a retail lot, but, you know, people would say to me, you know, why would you, why don't you um, have a retail lot or a big presence or why don't you do these trade shows, you know, these overland expos and why don't you do Jeep Beach, which I did it once. But if I could have this device press a button and reach millions of people, why would you sit on a trailer lot all day? Mm -hmm. people that wanted to pull in and I'm a retired cop from New York. Let me tell you about when I worked for 30 years and have to listen, stand staring at the trailer you've seen a million times, listening to their story. Um, you know, where the internet, you get so many people who are looking for a specific thing that they can deal direct and find exactly what they're looking for. Right. And that, I would presume, is how you got into a, I'll call it semi-custom builder, because you start getting requests from certain people. They want this, and they want that, and I want larger windows up front, and I want windows on the side. Is that... Yeah. And, you know, and, and to be truthful, the mistake that I made when I first started is I had 25 trailers on my lot. And guess what? None of them sold. That oh, I would have taken it if it had the ramp door. Oh, if I could have had it, you know, gray instead of black. Oh, you know. Yep. <laughs> Hence, build to order now. We're Burger King, man. Have it your way, I guess. Okay, so every trailer you build is built to order. You don't keep any in stock that are the standard, basic top seller, if you will. I'm trying that now for 2021. I, I have no choice because of the, um, you know, the, the supply chain. Sure. You know, uh, 
I'm trying to talk about that. To standardize. Right. So let's talk about that. I would imagine that like every manufacturer right now, no matter what it is, supply chain is tough. It's very tough, right? Mm -hmm. Prices go up. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can really hard to get supplies now so how how do you deal with that <laughs> i can read you an email i'll read it read you actually an email that i got today because i've had no choice but to cuz local local um, or suppliers in the states can't Provide so believe it or not, I've had to go overseas for products, mm -hmm. and I ended up wiring five digit numbers to China, hoping to buy these products. Yep. Then I did this back in the beginning of December. And then I emailed, I didn't hear anything, emailed, didn't hear anything. So now I'm like, great, you know. So I finally get the email back. Actually, it's dated. Uh, Yesterday, hi Tom. This week, can ready. Tomorrow, we'll book shipping space. Now, shipping increased double. Very crazy. So, you know, what's my response? Okay, how do I pay you the difference? So, <laughs> what am I gonna do now? Okay, uh, you you got the big chunk of my money. You told me the shipping is one thing. But what am I gonna do? Tell you no? Right. Okay, let me just, you know, welcome to my world, you know. But when you have customers, you know, where's my trailer? Where's my trailer? You know, you, you just got to do the right thing by your customers, I guess. And uh, you, you bite the bullet, man. You bite the bullet and you do it. Are you able to standardize certain, like, windows, for example? I would imagine that's a fairly expensive part of your trailer other than the actual aluminum or steel yeah right so are you able to standardize windows at least and let the customer just pick the location so you're using the same size windows predominantly well, trailers let's just say this because i didn't know what i didn't know when i went for the cool factor one of my models which is probably not the smartest thing has five different window sizes in it <laughs> but it looks cool it's kind yeah. of like uh, high heels on women. They look great, but they probably really hurt at yep. the end of the night when they're dancing. Yeah, well, five different window sizes really hurt now. <laughs> it's manufacturing. And, and, you know, the smart manufacturers, yeah, they do. They they do, but... Streamline. Uh, I say smart, very uh, business savvy. Mine was more for, I wanted to build a product that people really, really, really can be proud of. And... Uh, they look like a million dollars, I believe, in my heart, Silver Cloud, the Silver Eagle. You know, it's, uh, you know, I'm humbly proud of the handsome, the trailer that has a handsome look. And, uh, you know, it's it'll be part of their life for the rest of their life. That trailer, when it'll be at their funeral and their generation's funeral because I build something that's going to last forever. Sure. Really. And... What is the largest size that you build currently? Um, I've been building 14 footers now, and now I've got a 16 footer under construction. And one of my employees asked me if he could build his own trailer, and he's actually put a 20 foot, eight and a half by 20 together. I don't really want to get into something that large because it kind of takes the we out of we roll, you know, because <laughs> my market is for people that don't want to have to buy a dually or a big truck. Right. I want the lady, the retired, you know, school teacher that has a Toyota RAV4 and uh, with a 3,000 or 2,000 pound tow capacity. And she or he can enjoy, you know, this beautiful country without having to get a new vehicle, without being nervous about pulling something big. Right. I want them to pull something just light and economical and, uh, you know, get out and see what, what has been created. So is a five by eight, roughly 11, 1200 pounds then? No, five by eight aluminum is like, uh, 
probably 880 pounds. And that's loaded with everything? Well, no, because I build pretty much, I do all the hard work. I insulate it, I put windows, I put electric. But then each person is different. Some people will put, um, you know, build it out with all kinds of things. Other people will, uh, you know, just put a cot and a porta potty and right. five gallons of water and basics. Just want a place to sleep at the end of the day. So, is it safe to say then you're building a really nicely finished shell? That with, ticket. Right? You know why? You know why? Because think about this. Do you want to be told or do you want to go pay money? For where somebody felt like that's the best place for their sink. Right. Or that's the place where their kitchen should go. And do you want to pay that much money for somebody else's design? Meaning, think about this. You know, it, you, I see on this podcast, it says intellectual people. So I think if you can think out of the box, how do you know that that designer was really any smarter or better than you? Maybe it was just the easiest place or the cheapest place, or it was a way to maximize the profit. And that's where they said it should go. And they are the authority. Come on, man. What do you really, people still, people still camp in tents. Yep. So we really need all the fanciness we could use a, let me tell you, if you're hot and you had a five gallon bottle of water that you could put a little motorized pump and spray yourself down, you'd be happy. Right. If you're in the middle of nowhere. Right. <laughs> right. You know, at the end of the day, man, it's uh, you know, it's about the the the, the other concept of V roll was. If how many people really camp 365 days a year? Sure. So why do you have a uh, something that all you could do is camp in? What if you need to go to Home Depot and grab some tile for uh, use oh. use the wee roll? Okay, so now we're getting into the meat of meat we roll. So not only is it a camping spot, it's also now a part time utility trailer. Absolutely, because oh. if you look at my website, I will, and I'll say it, and I'll humbly say it, because, you know, you can't stay on top forever, but uh, I'll put my product up to anybody's product on the market, and you can beat mine, kick mine, drag mine, and if you destroy my trailer, you better show me the vehicle that pulled it. Because it's going to be, it ain't going to come out pretty. My thing is, is I want I came from an Italian building background. Like I built these townhouses. Yep. Like I built spec houses. It's the same thing. I will put my trailer up against anybody in the market. Because I have my own integrated aluminum floor that I designed with my own extrusion. Extruded. Okay. I have my own side corner rail. So I'll, I'll put it through any test you want to do and compare anybody's product. Listen, you know? So, Tom, what can Not a... Forever, but right now, I'd say I really haven't seen anybody's product compare yet. So what can a 5x8... Is its limitation dictated by the axle capacity? That's a very intelligent question. Very good. Very, very good question. And I'm actually... I'm actually, I, 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 you know how this saying is, have you ever talked to people that sometimes it's a pleasure to talk to because you know they're, they actually are alert and aware and they're smart and you can go places with the conversation? Sure. Yeah, that's a genius question that you ask because you. axles, I use a 3,500 pound shell of the axle. Okay. New. But I derate the axle because I use torsions. I derate the axle so it has more flex because imagine a basketball, you bounce it, it's rigid. Boom, boom, boom. Sure. 
I see these people bragging that they put a 3,500 pound axle on these little trailers that don't have the weight. Right. And they just bounce them and beat them to death. Where I have a formula for mine, my off-road, my aluminum trailers that I, I calculate and I derate my axle, even though the shell is 3,500 pounds, so that the axle is not too rigid that the trailer will do the ride like it's supposed to do. That's, so you, that's that question. That's a very deep, deep thought question. I like that. So you're getting the ride control by deraking so you don't have too much rebound in the trailer is what exactly. you're trying to mitigate. Okay. And so does that going back to the five by eight, you're, that trailer can carry 3,500 pounds total, including trailer weight of 880 pounds. Depending on the trailer, because if it's a five by eight by only four foot, you're really, unless you fill it with cement, right? you're never going to get to that capacity. Absolutely. But depending on the trailer that I build, it could be a 3,500 pound, five by eight if it's six foot tall. And sure. You know, you're going to, it's designed the ramp and you're going to put your four wheeler or your motorcycle. In. Right. So you could take, say, a 14 footer. Are your 14 footers dual axle or single axle? Yeah, Tim. So there's 7,000 yeah. pounds. Yeah. So there's 7,000 pounds. Now we can start loading up two four wheelers, put a canoe on top if we want, and mm -hmm. generator, no problem, plus a tent or a mattress inside if we want to go camping and four wheeling. Correct. Okay, that's fantastic. So what so your target customer is mainly maybe a advanced DIY person, right? Because you're counting on them to finish inside of their trailer however they choose, whether they get fancy with wood or metal or just even a cot or a blanket, really. And those are my favorite people. And why is that? Because, you know, more people in life have a dime than a dollar. More people in life find themselves helping their children because of, you know, different times. You know, I grew up, I'm blessed with two parents that are still married after 65 years in their 90s. And, you know, I grew up with that two unit family. I was so blessed. I'm still blessed. And, uh, but sometimes people grow up with, you know, one mom or one dad, you know, just a one parent family. And then they're struggling because they have kids. So then the parents tend to help them. And, you know, they, they, a lot of people thought their retirement was going to be one way, but they've helped their family members. And then it doesn't turn out. Well, those are those people that I can help because if you've priced these trailers out, you know, these little, Yep. RVs, they're, you know, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars. Easy. Who can all everybody who can all, you know, again, more people have a dime than a dollar. So I like the fact that they're real people, man. They work, they did the right thing, maybe they don't have a big budget. So, you know, just because somebody has a three hundred thousand dollar, you know, or six hundred thousand dollar prevost next to them. <laughs> the thing I'm going to say is this at night when you close your eyes and you put that blanket over you, doesn't matter whether you're in a $300,000 bus or a, you know, $5,000, $7,000 we roll, as long as my AC is working in there or your fan and you're comfortable, you know what? That's kind of, hey, it's them. And, and, and uh, you know, the one thing that probably, makes me the happiest and i could think of one lady in particular you know if i think about the company there's one lady that she it just she sticks with me all the time her name is mickey okay um i sold her a trailer a while ago for 39.95 her husband had passed away and she just was like you know i, I just want to get out of here i want to live my life she had a little hyundai and she uh met me i was eating lunch when she called me and i was at this little cuban cafeteria and she says well can i meet you there i want to buy a wee roll and i'm like okay so we sat had lunch pulled out my laptop did her work order and 
out of her trailer and she's put like in a year almost 30,000 miles and trailer says one love and she's been out in California been all over the country amazing and uh you know what changed her life because with her car she couldn't have pulled a big fifth wheel she didn't have a big budget right you know so how, how does Mickey use it then inside is she the cot type or the uh Blanket on the floor type, or what does she do? Mickey's cool. Um, a lot of your current customers will absolutely love this story. This is awesome. Thank you. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Thank you. So, so Mickey, Mickey sleeps how now? Just tell me that. Um, she sleeps in a. Uh, you know, he, she has this little bed that she's created, but I got to show you this. I can't find it. I, uh, she, 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 she has made this thing so cute, mm. so cute that uh, it just it's it's off the chain. That's all I can tell you. Is it's it's just it's off the chain. I I, I want to just show you one picture because. Okay. If you, you know, I told Mickey that um, that uh, if she is to sell her trailer, ever wants to sell that trailer, I want to buy it from her. Because, you know, sometimes it's not about the money with what you do. Hmm. It's, it's, it's sometimes it's about the difference you've made in somebody's life. Sure. Understood. And, uh, I, she's she's just my poster child. I can't I can't find it now because I mean I you know I, I have pictures of it, but I, I I will I will definitely forward those to you. I okay. really yeah. want to read those. So you bring up a point that Mickey's driven thirty thousand miles across the country with that trailer. So <laughs> does We Roll also offer service to their current customers for? Repacking wheel bearings and all of the general maintenance. That's a that's a loaded question. We don't promote that we're like a service center, but let's just say when Mickey came, her wheels got pulled, bearings got packed, tire yeah. pressure is taken care of. Yeah, we we uh, you know, so if any of my customers come, I'm not going to charge them for that. But the thing is, my customers are are all over the country. So where predominantly, I mean, obviously being in Florida, I would imagine a large majority of your business here is here in Florida. You'd be shocked. Not as much as you'd think. Interesting. And why do you think that is though? Maybe because I haven't like marketed in Florida, but I'm starting to get more and more from Florida as they see, but man, they are just all over the country. I mean, I have some in uh, New York, Pennsylvania, um, Ohio, Michigan, Georgia, North Carolina, Texas, California. Um, I got them all over. One of the things that you do so well is your live Facebook videos. It one of the biggest um, things that I believe that a lot of business owners don't do is connect, and you connect very well with your customers and also potential customers. Your on your on Facebook presence is impressive, actually, and I, I think I think that helps a lot of people because I'll watch it. And people will ask, well, where's my trailer? Where's my trailer in this process? You'll show a frame that's being welded and somebody will type, well, what about mine? And you'll actually walk over and you'll show them that. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I do. And I, you know, I've gotten beaten up recently on Facebook because, you know, people, people are like today, to be honest with you, I, I, my contract says non-refundable, and I just sent two people their money back because they were just, 
I didn't want to build them for them because I made it clear. They're like, oh, you know, your customer service isn't the greatest. When I said that, I said, you know, you could find any, you could, you could write. I've seen it because I'm one man and I hire people, but you know, I got a, a you know, I have several orders and I try to communicate as best as I can. Sure. Let me tell you this. And and it's damned if I do and damned if I don't about the customer service thing and, and the Facebook. I appreciate because that's why I do Facebook is mm-hmm. so you can see it. But then someone, you know, my contract says it's about 180 days, but in the event of a strike, can't get parts, pandemic, it reverts to a one-year contract. So I'm not out of my contract with anybody. But then they start bashing me. Oh, you don't call me and tell me. Well, okay. Hi. Yeah, Tom, when's my trailer coming? Well, I can't give you an exact date. Well, what do you mean? Well, because uh, the windows are in the middle of the ocean right now, on the way to China, from China. And well, but when do you think? Because I have plans and I'm going camping. Okay. Well, I don't know. Well, you're not helping me. But I think I should have your trailer done in maybe a month. Okay, in a month. You're, you lie. You, you lie. You told me it was a month. So then I don't respond to them. Well, oh, you're ignoring me. Your customers, you know, you can't win. And especially what I try to tell every one of them is that, look, you could say whatever you want. But when it comes down to brass tacks, yes, nobody's ever complained about the quality of my product. And I've never been out of the terms and conditions of my agreement. Right. But I'll be honest with you. Today, a guy pissed me off to the point of he's, you know, bashing me and this. And I said, you know what I'm going to do? I said, look at your price of your trailer. I said, look at the price that it is now. Have I raised your price? No. I said, you know what my problem is, is that I'm running a thin margin so mm-hmm. more people can own these products. But if you look at these teardrop companies, the same trailer, like not even wooden box, is like ten grand. They're they're making five, six thousand a pop, nine thousand a pop on one product. You know, I got to sell three of them to do that. Right. But guess what? Everybody can own one, and if I could run on thin thin margin, but I mean, I get it. When I you grow, you got to, and then things go up in price. But you know. I didn't like create this pandemic, but guess what? Go into Walmart, try to think, go into dollar store. Is it, 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 am I crazy or are there, are there things that are not on the shelves right now? Sure. But yet you're kicking my, kicking me down, beating me down. Oh, your customer service sucks. Your customer service sucks because it has happened. They, that's what they say. And if they get mouthy with me, you know what I do? Thing. I just said, you know what? I don't want to build for you. Go pay 10 grand for an inferior product. Buy. Oh, 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 I didn't ask for my I said, you're right, but I I have the right to refuse service too. And if you're gonna call me a crook and be mean to me, I don't want to build for you. Right. You know, they all say, like, you know, but then again, I have incredibly happy customers, but I'm, I'm the first to tell anybody who's looking at this. Am I perfect? No. Have I had complaints that I don't communicate and don't call and, 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 you know, nobody hears. I did say on Facebook once I had a man call me because there is a six month lead time. I made 17 changes, read email, change, send a price, 17 changes. And then he calls me before Christmas and says, Got a Christmas present for you, Tom. I said, yeah, well, what's that? I'm not doing any of those changes. I'm going back to the standard order. Okay, do you know how much time that took? So if I call you and I got to talk to you for 20 minutes and you're going to change and add things, and then you're going to talk to me and change and add things again, right? I don't communicate with anybody. I, that's a bad thing. But I take the deposit and I tell them, look, you're not going to hear from me until I'm ready to start your trailer. But then when I'm ready to start your trailer, I'm going to confirm that these are the things you want. Do you want to add roof racks? Do you want to add flooring? And then I'm going to start. I know maybe that's not the right way to do it, but guess what? 
it's kind of like I'm trying to build an affordable product because not everybody is, you know, blessed with finances. Right. So is that the most challenging part of your business? Right now it is. It is. But How I can you tell you, I could tell you all the bad, but I have some amazing good that I can tell you that comes from this company. So how many employees do you have currently? 12. 12 people. And now, mainly fabricators and welders? See, that's the problem. I got more people building than I have helping me in the office. So are you basically a one-man show in terms of sales and service and customer? Sales, sales I am because I want to talk to everybody that I build for. Sure. And then what, what are the, what's your help in the office in the, on the backside mainly? Well, I, I took a guy out of production and made him a, like I took an assembler and made him a, a production coordinator. Okay. Okay. Cause that he knows all the parts of the trailer. He's built them. Right. And he has a relationship. He takes care of all the parts. So that's unloaded a lot on me. Right. And he also has a rapport with the yeah more in admin people. I had a bookkeeper. He was stealing. I had another girl. I got her 10 months in the Marion County jail for stealing from me who worked in the office. Mm-hmm. So she was very clever. Uh, she took the routing numbers off the bottom of my check, went to Vista print online, ordered checks, realized that we were a month behind and started writing checks, it's forging my name. Um, but it's public record. I got her 10 months in the County jail. So, yeah so i've had it you know meaning you know i I, unfortunately that's the reality of it especially if these you know they just don't know people's mindset right if you don't mind me asking how many trailers do you believe you've sold to this point in four years (laughs) probably hundreds yeah yeah okay and and you know it's a shame because I see one company and they number each trailer. And I'm like, darn, mm. that was a genius idea. But then it was an idea, a good idea for them, but for their competition, no. Because if I know you're selling uh, 200 of those, let me just duplicate that. Why reinvent the wheel? Let me turbocharge that engine. Right, right. <laughs> So do you, I saw a video that you manufacture in Atlanta as well still? No, 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 no. Had some trailers manufacturing in Georgia. Right. I'm sorry. In Georgia. So are you using somebody else as well? Or do you personally have a manufacturing facility there as well? No, no, no. I use somebody there, but I, I manufacture my own here in Florida. All aluminum. I do my aluminum stuff here. Ah, okay. So the steel stuff is done there and you're doing the aluminum in Ocala. Mm-hmm. I gotcha. Okay. And you said torsion axles, so you don't use any um, spring axles. Yeah, I do on the steel trailers I do because they're heavier. Makes sense. Okay. Um, all Dexter, I presume? It's funny that you ask. I use all Dexter torsion, yeah. But yeah. we use Rockwell on the... Uh, on the steel ones. Good axles. Dexter. I mean, Dexter is like the, well, I say I like Dexter because I mean, there's some Lithani- Lith- 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 Lithuanian company now doing axles, and there's a few others that are coming to the market, but I'm a little bit obsessive, and uh, I use on my trailers galvanized axles. And you're like, well, you're never going to put this put this thing in salt water. Why would you use galvanized? Because my trailers, I honestly want to build with the best components money can buy. The galvanized cost me more, but they'll never rust. Right. I have an idea for a trailer that would be what I think would be great. And I actually sketched it out. And I know you're not a custom builder. However, there might be a market for it. So one day, one day when we roll is really running like a well-oiled machine because you have so much help and you have 
a custom shop to the side that wants to do one-off custom stuff or batches of custom stuff, I, uh, I believe that I have a good design for you. Okay. Hey, I will tell you this. Selling them is easy. Building them is the other half of the story. <laughs> well, the, the, the getting them built, getting them built is the other half of the story. I, I, I can appreciate that. <laughs> well, the, the one thing, though, about manufacturing, right, and you certainly know this now, is streamlining is the most efficient way of doing it, right? Yeah. And Custom is cool, and it's not. It always, is. but it's not always profitable. Correct. <laughs> Correct. And these are very, very ugly. To take it a step further, though, you your foundation of an aluminum trailer, whether it's a five by eight or an eight by twenty five, it's scalable because the way your extrusions on your floor right Correct. work it doesn't make a difference it's maybe your full length of material might be a showstopper but we can always get that longer correct you could weld it yeah like the sticks coming 24 foot okay so there's your limitation now it's 24 feet unless you weld it or have some sort of a overlap joint in the center you can extend it with an I-beam, right? And then both sides of the floor would butt up to that I-beam, that aluminum I-beam that's welded, and now you have a longer floor, yes, right? correct. So the beauty of it, and this is what I'm getting at, the beauty of it is the shell and the floor and the axle make up the basic trailer of 95% of the trailers out there, right? So now you have a streamlined operation to build shells, if you will, and then the custom shop to build the other portion that's truly custom for that specific need. You could run that shop. I'll build the shells for you, and then you can run that division, okay? You could actually have all the profit to that division. Just please don't give me the headache of it. Let me just do what I do because building a box on wheels so easy a caveman can do it. Well, we're the caveman and we're we're still figuring it out. Okay. Yeah. You can have that custom. I'll even give you space in the shop. I'll yeah. build them and roll them down and I'll say, okay, here you go. And I'll let you hire employees and interview them. And then when their baby mama has them thrown in jail and they don't make it to work that day or they're get a tire, flat tire, or, you know, you hear every other excuse and then they got to leave her. I'll let you manage them. And then when you have to get so mad that you fire them, then you're going to turn around and say, well, now what do we do? I'm going to say, well, you fired him. So like, it's like if you, you own a restaurant and you don't like that dishwasher and you fire him, guess what? You're washing dishes for your customers. So you can have that side. I'll, I'll give you, the, I'll even give you the space for free and build you the shelves. Okay. <laughs> what if I told you, though, my idea consists of a call it 22 to 24 foot aluminum floor flatbed with a eight by 10 box of living space in the front? I did it. I've done one. You have? Yeah. It's um basically what I did is I built a car hauler for a guy, but it wasn't to haul his cars. This was like this like in Florida. Uh, where are you from, by the way? I live in Orlando, North oh, Orlando. Oh, okay. Well, have you ever well by you, what is it? Not it's not croom, um uh, oh well. Yala no, by you there's this Part of the Mormon ranch, there's they, they go down and uh, go muddy in these areas. They take their four wheelers. It's right south of you. Um, I know. Yes. Um, I know. Know, it has a funny name, but not Hogweiler. Not Hogweiler because that's by me. Yep. But I built a trailer for a gentleman, and uh, 
that the front half was his cabin mm-hmm. to sleep in, but then he would put like this thing called a razor. Yep. Like like a four. Yeah. And he put it behind it. And so he could take the his toys to the mud hole, but then at the end of the night, he's sleeping in the cab in the front. I did that. It was 20, I don't remember, 24 foot, but it was just a car. It was basically it was an open deck, and then we right. built a box on the front of it. Right. Will you do that again? Yeah, actually, you know what's funny is I have a guy that just texted me right now and has asked me to build that exact thing that you're talking about and um he sent me a picture and the answer is he's he's from some other state and he wants me to build it for him and uh you know there's a waiting list right now so i didn't jump on it because you know but yeah the answer is yes i don't okay can't find the pictures right this second but the answer to that is yes okay that's good to know very good to know actually so where does we roll go from here well we roll is in the process now of standardizing this year we're building in i'm building more inventory i'm going to change the swing where i can go back to inventory and just say, sorry, take it or not. But we've built up, I think, such a demand that what, what I'm not saying whatever product we build, but taking our years of seeing what everybody wanted and kind of building a, a cool trailer and then continue, I would think that's the, the direction that we will would go. I mean, I have big plans. I like, I have dreams for we roll, you know that I wish I could do one day, but you know, it's... Do, you, do you mind sharing that with me with us? Yeah, I'll tell you. I mean, this is just a pipe dream, but you know, I always wanted to be able to have something that I almost would have like, a, like almost like cyber missionaries that if one day I had enough people with we roll that, and there was one way that these people could be in the event of a disaster. The people with we rolls because they already got the camper and they got the Jeep. That if there was a hurricane, there was a disaster, there was a tornado, that we roll could be this like organization of people. They all have the same common interest. They camp off the product and that they could load these campers up and bam, bring them to a spot where they would almost like be known that they would just give their home up for a week that people would be able to camp in these little campers or port bodies and you know almost create a movement of good yep that so, that that's that to me would be success yeah so, I, I love it i absolutely love it so what why What's the limitation in creating that? Remember you asked if I was a one man. <laughs> well, I understand. I understand that, Tom. But I also, I also say this, that if you, if you put out to your customers that that is something that you would like to create, perhaps one of them or many of them step up and try to create that for and with you, right? Because it's more of a community, not necessarily a, yes, indirectly you make money because you sell WeRoll, right? But you're not making money from these people offering their camper up, right? Right, or just be there to help or, right. be, you know, because I I tried it one time, a long time ago, I, I ran a Facebook post and then, I remember this one guy bought a wheel from an engineer from Texas. Is, oh, well, you got to be careful when you step into nonprofit uh, situations. And, you know, just like, I'm like, I didn't need a nonprofit. I was just like, right. oh, wait. And then everybody has their opinion of that's not on their agenda. Sure. And well, they want to be the keyboard warrior to tell you how it doesn't work. And I'm like, oh, my God. 
nobody took the ball and ran with it. One of the things that you'll see, I did an interview with Mike from Mike's weather page here in Florida. I don't know if you're aware of him. He, um, he has over a million followers on Facebook, and he is a private amateur. He has to call himself an amateur weatherman, but he is he's phenomenal. He really is. It's who I use, especially in hurricane season, for my weather. And he does a daily Facebook um, morning and sometimes in the afternoon a live, and he goes over the weather, and he really gets deep into models. And Mike was explaining to me that he learned a lot doing storm chasing because he's gotten into hunting storms. Yeah. Basically, what he's learned now is, for instance, for linemen, there is a whole community that is driven by the government to set up. They can set up 2,000 beds overnight for the linemen. And he's like, this is stuff that you don't know unless you see it, right? And he said it's fascinating to see literally little cities set up overnight by a company that's, that is in charge of doing this. And that's what they do. So when you said that, I was like, well, that's really cool, but you want to do it for civilians. So maybe vets, even vets, you know? Yeah. Giving giving people, you know, a place to live, you know? Obviously, you need to make a living. I get that. And we roll provides income. Do you look at we roll also as a self-gratifying business because you feel like you're enabling someone to live out their retirement or their dream that they never could afford otherwise? Absolutely. And absolutely. And uh, I've seen, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like there's countless stories I had a man in my office the other day that he tells me he bought a Leroy. He actually bought two. And he was in my office and he's, you know, he's an army guy and came in, you know, and just a salt of the earth man. And he, he got teary eyed with me. And he says, Tom, I want you to know something. I said, What's that? And he says, What you're doing has made a difference in my life. I'm like, What do you mean? He said, Well, you know, my wife is in a wheelchair. And I said, yeah, I, you know, okay, or I mean, I understood she was disabled. And he says, you know, she really can't do much, he says, but I can't tell you how many sunsets we've seen together because of your camper. I'm able to wheel her in this camper. Mm. It's big enough she can turn around. It's light enough that the pickup truck can pull it. And you've made a difference. And, uh, That's why it's worth it, you know. Right. Um, those are the things that, like, when you're like so sick of the daily grind of, you know, the welder's radio is too loud and <laughs> the assembler's mad and he throws his drill on the floor because he, you know, whatever broke a screw in the trailer or something, and then you know you're like, huh. um, yeah, it makes a difference, you know. I'll, I'll, I'll share a story with you. Just um, I don't know if I should say this because you know it's 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 it, but it's more like the I would say to you it's more like the miracle, you know the the, the proof that you know there is a God. And um, one time I was uh, dealing with a lady that some people in New Mexico were buying her trailer for her because she was a homeless lady. She was just, you know, homeless, a struggling elderly lady that, you know, was up there in age. And she drives all the way across the country to pick up her trailer in Georgia. And when she gets there, the door manufacturer, whatever, the doors either didn't come in or were on back order or something. We didn't have, the trailer was done, but we didn't have the doors. 
And she looks at me in her old car and she looks up at me and says to me, Tom, is this trailer really going to get done? You know, is this really going to get done? And I'll never forget her big blue eyes. And she said with a wrinkled face, you know, the, the weathered face. And I looked at her and I said, I looked at her and I said, I promise. I said, I promise it'll get done. I said, it's just, you know, you see the trailers there. Just we're waiting on the doors. And, you know, she looks at me and I said, I promise you that uh, I'll do it. And then I asked her, I said, you know, do you believe in God? I just asked her straight and we were this far apart. She says, yes, I do. He always provides for me. And I said, well, I promise to him and to you that I will make sure this trailer is done. And ironically, it was the coldest night of the year in Georgia, and I didn't know this. But anyway, I left and because I was at the plant, I had to come back to Florida. And I get a phone call from a 912 area code. And um, the man says, hello, uh, I'm calling. Is this the trailer company? He says, I said, yes. He says, are you building a trailer for so-and-so? I said, yes, sir. He says, well, what, what's going on with that trailer? I said, well, sir, everything's done except the, the door manufacturer. They just didn't get the doors. They were on back order. They were waiting on aluminum. He says, okay, he says, because I'm pastor, uh, I'm pastor, I forget his name, from Franklin, Franklin Holiness Church in Douglas, Georgia. And he says, a few of our parishioners were out raking up a park, a campground area, and they saw this lady, this elderly lady camping, and it was the coldest night of the year, and they asked her her story, and she told them, and I just wanted to make sure it was true. And I said, yes, sir, it is. I promise. It, I promise you it, it's true. He says, well, okay. So we're going to take her and we're going to give her a cabin mm. for a week. And um, we'll make sure she has a warm place to stay. And uh, I'm like, really? He says, yeah. And for what it's worth, I go to Georgia twice a month. I go up right through Douglas, and this church is there. And every day, for every time I'm there, every two weeks, for the last three years now or two and a half years, I go by and I write a check, and I stuff it through the door. And I know you're not supposed to tell, you know, if you're tithing. I, I, you know, tithing is important, but I always give. I go by this church, and I always put a donation through the window. Because it's kind of like proof to me, to them, that when you do his work and you help his people, you'll always, there's always people out there that will help facilitate it. And I always want to keep that paying it forward chain going on my behalf because of what they did for that one lady. And not one lady, somebody who really needed the product because that's where she lives. And if I look back and don't do B-roll anymore one day, that's those are the stories that I'll leave in my heart that, that you know, I know I did some good. So. Well, Tom, I really appreciate your time. You've been more than gracious with it. And I love what you're doing. Please continue. And it's an I admirable think. job. Um, but in all seriousness, it's great work. And um, it's a pleasure to meet you finally as well. Thank you. Thank you. And for everybody watching, please, please subscribe down below. Subscribe and ring that notification bell on YouTube. And I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening. Find us on YouTube and Facebook at the Intellectual People Podcast and online at the intellectualpeoplepodcast.com. Check back for exciting new episodes.